Magnetic and geophysical surveys have always been a challenge. They have traditionally involved the use of heavy, expensive equipment in hilly and inaccessible areas. Traditionally, the options were limited to walking with a ground-based magnetometer, which is slow, or flying with a demagnetized helicopter, which as we all know is expensive. So how do we achieve safe, affordable and highly detailed magnetic surveys? The answer lies in these flying machines we called drones. Hi, I'm Varun, the founder and CEO at Hammer Missions, and in this video, we're going to look at the key considerations to keep in mind whilst using magnetic surveys using drones. In the last five years, drones and airborne magnetometers have changed the way geophysical surveys are conducted. Now, a traditional magnetic survey can be conducted five times faster and ten times cheaper by using a magnetometer-mounted drone. Not only is the survey faster and more affordable, but it also results in higher resolution of the data, as the UAV or the drone can be flown much closer to the surface compared to a helicopter. However, using a drone isn't as easy and there are a few different things to keep in mind. Choosing the right equipment. As with any survey, it's important to commence project planning with the expected outcomes in mind. The data you need to, coll you need to collect for a specific application will determine the, the amount of hardware and software choices for the survey. So starting off with field equipment, it's really important to understand that you choose the right correct drones, the magnetometers, suspension systems, mobile tablets and more. We recommend starting out with a magnetometer here and building a system around that. Two of the commercially available high quality magnetometers are Geometric Mag Arrow and the Sensors Mag Drone R4. With regards to drones, the DJI Matrice 300 remains popular. However, other heavy lift drones such as the DJI Matrice 600 can also be used. The second main thing is the flight parameters and the software. This is an important consideration because the choice of flight parameters and the subsequent mission planning software really governs how the, the mission will be flown. For example, a mineral exploration survey is typically flown at 20 to 30 meters from the ground, whereas some of the UXO surveys will be flown at a 1 to 2 meters from the ground. So therefore, flight software can really account for this and it's really important you choose the right one. Our flight software, Hammer Missions for example, has a flight mode specifically built for magnetic surveys. The other thing to make sure is the processing software. It's really important to make sure that you understand how you're going to process that data. Traditionally, geophysical processing tools such as Geosoft or SS Montage should work fine here. But bear in mind that the processing may have to account for the drone noise and unique flight characteristics of the drone survey. Once you've selected the right equipment for the job, it's important to consider the operational and the flight challenges of the field and have a plan to combat them ahead of time. Let's try and understand these a bit better. Site challenges. The first site challenge that you might have come across is hilly terrain. Magnetic surveys are rarely conducted over completely flat terrain and an important consideration here is to understand the topology of the target site before so that you can acquire high resolution elevation data to study the site. This elevation data can be procured in the form of digital elevation models, also known as DEMs or DEMs, or digital surface models. These are typically raster images representing a site of an area and allow you to visualize the site elevations in a GIS visualization program such as QGIS or ArcGIS. The same data set can then be used to automate the flight path of the UAV so that it follows the terrain at the target site, maintaining a safe distance from the ground and ensuring that the highest quality data is collected. Takeoff locations. Another challenge in pre-flight planning is to accurately plan with the right takeoff locations for the drone. This is particularly important if you're flying in hilly areas as it can be hard to maintain visibility of the drone at all times if you don't pick a high enough location to take off. Conversely, if you choose a location too high, your drone may not be able to fly more than 200 meters below the takeoff point. So choosing the optimal takeoff location is key. These locations also govern how efficient your flight will be, particularly if you're surveying a large area and you want to split that area into multiple smaller blocks to make your survey more manageable. Planning for terrain and takeoff locations ahead of time on the target site will save multiple days on site. So other operational challenges that you want to consider might, might be related to how streamlined your operations are and that's essentially what's going to lead to a lot of the cost savings. Armed with the right equipment, terrain data and carefully planning, it's important to make sure that you've got all the different operational challenges under control. 
Drone configuration, for example, can be a challenge. Magnetic surveys can have a drone uh, with one key feature, which is the integration of a drone with a magnetometer. And being a special purpose magnet magnetic survey, it's often not possible to rigidly attach the magnetometer to the body of the drone, as is the case with some of the other payloads, such as cameras. So attaching the magnetometer close to the drone would mean introducing drone magnetic signature to the, to the captured dataset, thereby inducing noise and reducing the data quality significantly. Therefore, magnetometer needs to be suspended about two to three meters away from the drone using cables, uh, as shown in the image uh, in this video. Takeoff and landing can be also really important to figure out. So since the magnetometer is suspended from the drone, the only way to safely take off and land the drone is under manual control. This would typically involve landing the sensor first, moving the drone to the side, and then landing the drone safely away from the sensor. It's important to understand that manual control is only required during takeoff and landing. The survey itself should be conducted using flight automation software so that you have high precision line following to get the highest quality data possible. The other important challenge is, is, is the suspended configuration. The suspended configuration of the magnetometer comes with a whole host of flight challenges. Flying in too windy conditions is a no-go. It's also important to understand that the flight automation software should be able to smoothen out the curves in the, or, so smoothen out the rigid corners in the flight to reduce the pendulum swing on the magnetometer. This is something our flight software hammer missions can help with. Simply press a button in the mission planning settings and the generated flight path will automatically be smoothened out for the best results. Mission planning challenges are also really important to keep in mind here. For example, terrain awareness is an important feature. So when it comes to mission planning, one of the first questions to ask is, does your mission planning software support terrain awareness? Most importantly, does it support terrain awareness with imported digital elevation models or DEMS? With magnetic surveys, it's inevitable to find targets in hilly areas, and therefore in these scenarios, it's the best approach is to purchase a digital elevation model or a digital surface model of the target, and then import that model into your mission planning software. The software needs to work, out com needs to work completely offline and needs to calculate the flight path by taking the terrain into account. The another thing that the software needs to do is to split the area. In the case of surveying a large area, which is more than a square kilometer, you would find that due to battery constraints on the drone and the regulatory constraints that the drone can only fly in a 500 by 500 meter uh, envelope, you would have to split the large area into smaller blocks and survey them separately. Over here, it's important to make sure that you have high enough overlap between smaller blocks and identical flight parameters so that the results can be later stitched together into a single picture for the entire area. You can do this really easily in Hammer Missions by selecting the total area and then splitting it into smaller squares of a manageable size in your, in your survey. Hammer can also ensure that you can change the flight parameters for one block and then those flight, flight parameters are instantly copied over to all the different blocks in your survey so that the stitching process is really easy and straightforward later on. So the other important thing is flight lines and tie lines. So as we know with a traditional magnetic survey, it's important to understand the geophysical signature of the target. The capabilities of the magnetic sensor are really important here, and therefore that will allow you to be able to calculate the best line spacing for your project. So the same can be said for tie line spacing as well, and we recommend working with a geophysicist to understand the best spacing for your projects. Once you have an understanding of the line spacing, you can input the spacing as a parameter into the flight software directly so that it can create flight lines at a certain interval and then tie lines at another interval. Onboard waypoints is another challenge that you might encounter. So essentially, when you're flying large scale magnetic surveys, you want to understand the limitations of the drone you're using. For instance, the DJI Metri 600, popularly used in magnetic surveys, has an onboard limitation of 99 waypoints. A waypoint is just a 3D point used to create the flight path. This means that after traveling through 99 waypoints, the drone will stop, wait there for the next batch of 99 waypoints from the flight software. How the flight software handles this transition between different waypoints is critical to the overall success of your mission. It's important to note that this limitation only exists in drones such as the Matrice 600, but have been resolved in the Matrice 300 uh, drone by DJI, where you can upload up to 65,000 waypoints and more. So, if you're using any of these drones for magnetic surveys, it's important to understand what limitations they have and whether your flight software can actually deal with those limitations correctly. Moving on to data processing and analysis. Once the data has been captured in the best way possible, we recommend using a tool such as Geosoft's OSS Montage to process and visualize the data set. 
We again uh, recommend working with a geophysicist to eliminate noise from the data set during processing. Um, so all in all, here's what a magnetic survey would look like in terms of once it's been processed and analysed. So overall, we hope this video provided you with an exhausted overview of what to expect if you're taking on a drone-enabled magnetic survey. If, you'd, if you liked the video, please do give us a like and if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the comment section below. If you'd like to try out Hammer Missions, feel free to visit our website at hammermissions.com and feel free to give our magnetic missions a go. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.